Alright you guys, welcome back to another episode of Head Over Heels and with me, oh my goodness guys, I am just shaking internally, you can't see this, but um, how can I, how should I address you? Um, YB Hannah Yo. No, there's no more YB because oh. parliament is dissolved. Oh, so okay, there we go. A lot of times people say YB, but people are too shy to ask, what's YB? Young YB Ber- simply means young Ber- Berhormat. Berhormat. Yeah, the honourable yes. in English. So you only get the title mm-hmm. if you win an election. Got but it. because parliament is dissolved, so yes. I'm no longer YB. So just Hannah Yo. Yes, just Hannah. Oh, okay. Um, so everyone, there you go. Um, 101 uh, <laughs> in, about politics uh, right before we start already. Um, so with me, um, our our most beloved Hannah Yo is with us in the studio. Really, truly an honor. I think first of all, I just want to say thank you so much for coming on the show. Like I know with elections coming up, your time is booked. So thank you for sparing like an hour or two with us today. And uh, yeah, okay. So now that we've, I've got my first question answered, there's no longer YB. Um, so that, that means if let's say then when would be the next round people ask call you YB? How does it work? So it's just a title okay. that's like on yeah. and off. So every three to five years, uh-huh. Malaysians will go out and select and choose, yes. vote for their government. Mm-hmm. Why three to five years? The the law says that, you know, when when the, the period of election is over, yes. whoever gets majority. Yep. Okay. So for parliament, mm-hmm. we have 222 seats That's right. up for contest. That means the entire Malaysia is broken into 222 areas. Mm. For all these areas, they have to elect their representative, people who would speak up for them. This representative will be sent into parliament. Right. When the 222 MPs, okay. member of parliaments, they are elected, when they gather, okay, there will be um, a majority to be decided. Mm. So what is a majority? 51% of 222. Yeah. Okay. They must support one person. Right. That one person who has the command of uh, the majority support mm-hmm. would become prime minister. Right. Okay? okay. So when you go in, you go in with different party logos, yes. different coalition. Mm-hmm. And they would then decide mm-hmm. that, okay, together with party A, B, C, mm-hmm. we form 51%. Right. Okay. And then party A, B, C will choose their leader to be prime minister. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? Yes. Okay. So then when they form a government, mm-hmm. that government will rule for three years minimum, mm-hmm. maximum five years. That's right. So after the third year, mm-hmm. if the prime minister feels, okay, I'm confident I can win again, I will dissolve parliament. Oh. He can only do that after the third year. Okay. So that is, that's why they say minimum three years, okay. maximum five, year, five okay. years. You cannot go longer than five years. Uh-huh. So you have that window. Uh-huh. And that's why now yes. you hear about Undi Banje. People are protesting the timing. Yes. We have now crossed the third year. Correct. Since 2018, right? Mm-hmm. So you have 2019, 2020, 2021. So actually last year, mm-hmm. we were ready for election. But the Prime Minister can choose the timing. So he has up to next year. Within the five-year period. Yes, okay. maximum. Okay. So because he selected timing now to benefit him, that's mm. why people are protesting. They say, why do you choose a time when there's monsoon season? Yes. When there are people who cannot come out to vote because of flood? Yes. When people are busy yes. relocating? Yeah. When there are schools being opened up as flood relief center, but mm. at the same time, the schools are being used as voting stations. How mm. can you expect police, uh, election commission officers to do both? Yeah. Are they meant to help flood victims or are they meant to coordinate for voting. Yeah. That's why the Undi Banji came about. Right. Yeah. So we have that period now. Now, then some people will ask, um, he has dissolved parliament, right? That's yes. why now we have no more MPs, no more yeah. YBs. We yeah. are all going out. 222 seats yeah. will face election. Correct. Okay. Then uh, some people ask, what about state? Mm-hmm. How come you say some states buba, some states don't buba? So this is what I have shared with you just now is at the national level. Imagine the same process at the states. Okay. Okay. Because you have federal government at the national level, but you also have state government. Okay. So every state will have different number of seats because some states are bigger, Mm -hmm. some states are smaller. Okay. So some states have 70 over seats. Right. Some states have maybe... 
30 seats. Mm, okay? Much lesser. So like police is a smaller state, they mm-hmm. will have lesser seats. Mm-hmm. Um, some s- The states also have that three to five years. Oh, same thing. Same period. Oh, which is why recently there's a That's Johor right. Undi. That's right. Ah, That's okay, right. Okay. So sometimes it's up to the leader yes. of the government, the state government, they mm-hmm. decide what's the best timing to go. Right. So you have technically the third to fifth year, you have the two years window to decide what's the best time. It's just that all these years, for the last 50, 60 years, yes. Malaysia have never seen two-party system. They have always only yep. seen and experienced the Barisan National Government. That's right. That's why those days, when they dissolve, they dissolve at the same time. Uh, okay, because they're all from the same coalition, correct. same party. But now, after 2008, yes. we have two-party system. So you have the existence of Pakatan Harapan. Mm-hmm. And recently, you have another third coalition, mm-hmm. Perikatan National, which I'll explain to you yes, later. It's very confusing for me. Yes. I'm not going to lie. Yes. I can't keep so, up. But yes. Because of that, some states will now have election. Mm-hmm. Some states will not have their state elections. Oh. Okay. So which states are going yes. for election this round? The BN states. So, mm-hmm. in the last one year, yeah. you have had state governments who have already had their state election. That's right. So, you have Sabah, mm-hmm. you have Sarawak, That's right. you have Johor, yep. and you have Malacca. So, for these four, from the time they have formed their government, they have three to five years to run. Okay. So, okay. they have done their ele- they, they state have done election. It. They have done it. Okay. Okay. So, now the BN government dissolved. Yes. Ismail Sabri, the prime minister, yes. is from BN. He dissolved national. National. So the BN led states, yes, the states that have no control, mm-hmm. will now go for their election, which is the upcoming election. Correct. So mm-hmm. you are looking at Perlis, mm-hmm. you're looking at Pahang, mm-hmm. you're looking at Perak. Yeah. Okay. What then about what Selama? about Harapan states? Yeah. So Harapan states and the states governed by PAS, yes. like Kelantan and Trengganu. Mm-hmm. And together with Harapan, they say now is monsoon season. Uh-huh. We don't want to go for election now. We would like to focus on helping the people. So we are not having our state elections now. So if you are staying in Selangor, for example, yes. when you come out to vote, yes. you are only voting for your national representative, your member of parliament. Right, so that's why in, in the My SVR app, there is two. There's Dun and Parliament. That's right, you are right. Oh. So, <laughs> so, those days, okay. when you come out to vote, it's you are given time. two pieces of paper. You right. choose your national representative, yes. member of Parliament, yes. or you choose your state representative. That's but right. now, if you are living in Pera, yes. you'll be given two papers because yes. the state government has also dissolved. Correct. But if you are in Selangor, Penang, yep. Negeri Sembilan, mm-hmm. you are only given one piece of paper because you're only choosing your national representative. Next year, mm-hmm. when the time is up for the state, yeah. they will call for their own elections, state right. elections. Right. Then the people of Selangor will go out to vote again. So I give you an example. Yes. If you live in Subang Jaya, yes. your dun, dun means what does it mean? day one undangan negeri. Negeri, okay. okay. Day one undangan. What is adun? Adun okay. means Ali Dewan Undangan Negeri. So Dun Dewan Undangan Negeri means the state assembly. Yes. Ali Dewan Undangan Negeri means a member of, of the, the state, state assembly. assembly. Okay. So you call them state assemblyman, state assembly person. Yes. So in Bahasa, yes. people always say my Adun, my Adun. Right. That's what it means. Okay. 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 So they are just your state representative. And you are the Adun for Subang Jaya. I was Jaya. Adun. For, for Subang Jaya yes. for 10 years. Yes. Okay. So I contested state seat Subang Jaya 2008 mm-hmm. 2013. Okay. And then in 2018, mm-hmm. the, my third election, mm-hmm. I gave up state politics mm-hmm. and I went national politics. So I went to contest for a member of parliament seat, parliamentary right. seat in Kuala Lumpur. From state to that's right. National level. Yes. Okay. Okay. So then I no longer represent the people of Subang. Yes. But now I represent the people of Segambut in, in, in parliament. Yeah. Okay. Understood. So that's what Adun means. Huh? Okay. Ali okay. Dewan Undangan Negeri. When you yep. say Adun, it's just state representative. Yeah. But if you are staying in Subang, you will get two pa- papers, right? Those days. Mm-hmm. Adun ballot paper and also the ballot paper to choose your member of parliament. That's right. That parliamentary seat is called Subang. The seat of Subang. Right. Okay, yeah. So every seat, the 222 national seats, they all have name Correct. over that seat. 
So it can be Subang or if you are living in Seremban, that seat is called Seremban. Yours was Segambut. Segambut. Now Segambut. So if you live in Puchong, the Puchong. the seat is called Puchong. Ah. Oh. Uh, Okay. Okay. So it is clear. Yes. So sorry, that, I'm digesting everything. Yes. But yes, very clear so, so far. Please, please stop me if I'm too no, fast. No. But simply put, mm. yeah, this coming election, um, depending on where you live, like your your state is, yeah. you will have different number of votes. Ballot papers. Ballot papers. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. So if right. your state is going at the same time, yes, you will get two pieces of paper. Okay. And if, if it's not, if it's not, you only get one. one You're only choosing your parliament. member of parliament. Got it. Yeah. So okay. okay, understood. So far, so good. Yeah. Wow. So if you if you live in Malacca, yes. Johor, uh-huh. you're getting one piece of paper. Selangor, one piece of paper. Right. Negeri Sembilan, one piece. Penang, okay. one piece. Okay. Only the states like Pahang, Perlis, mm-hmm. and Perak. Yeah. You get two pieces of paper. You Got choose it. your Adun and you choose your MP. I have a question. So I recently, I'm not from KL. Yeah. Uh, so my IC has always been in Johor. Yeah, right. And I recently finally bought my own place here. So I finally have a permanent address. So you have a new address in on K- your IC. Correct, which I've just changed. But I only just found out that in order for... It all happened when the election was also announced somewhat. Yeah. Uh, so I technically cannot vote in KL for this round because right. it takes three months to reflect. Yeah. Just want to understand why so long? Why can't okay. it be immediate? Yeah. So a lot of things are still not digitalized. Right. Okay. So... Last time, mm-hmm. only if you are age 21 years old and above, mm-hmm. you get to vote. Yes. When Pakatan Harapan came into power in 2018, when Syed Sadiq was the minister, mm. he proposed yes. together with our cabinet yeah. to change two things. Yeah. To allow younger people to vote. That's right. So their argument is, if you are 18, you can drive a car, mm-hmm. you can get married at 18, mm-hmm. you should be mature enough to be able to vote. Yeah. So we move the minimum age to vote from 21 to 18. Yes. So that's why now they call it undi 18 because yeah. 18 year old can now vote. Mm. But at what part at, at what stage of the year do you turn 18, mm. right? So some people turn 18 in January, yeah. some people turn 18 in December. Yes. So when will they put your name into yeah. the electoral roll? Yeah. Electoral roll that means the register containing the name of all voters. Because when you come out to vote on that day, the people who are checking the voting stations, they have a list of names, right? Yes. These are the people who can vote in Sagambut. Yes. Okay. So all those who turn 18, their names will be added into the list mm. when you turn 18. Got it. But they register it not, not on the day you turn 18. They register it one month later at the 16, on the 16 of the following month. So if my birthday is 1st January, yeah. On the 16th of February, February, my name will be added into the electoral roll. Yeah. Okay. So it's not like an automatic thing. They, they do that Got the it. next following month. Mm. So when they pa- dissolve parliament and now that they have announced, they will use the gazetted electoral roll that mm-hmm. is dated in August this year. Oh. Okay. Now, there are some minor changes like address and all that. Sometimes they will put in. That's why we always tell people, check the MySema. Yes. Check. Check your details. Yes. They will tell you. Okay. So your question is, when I'm I'm sure certain you're not eighty now. Um, no, but I look. Do I look eighty? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm thirty now. You are thirty. Yes. Okay. So the second amendment that Pakatan Harapan has done is also to make it automatic voters registration. Okay? Yes, that's so much better. Yes, I really didn't know where they register then. Correct. So, so those days before yes. the 2018 amendment, yes. we have to go to Pasamalam. Yeah. We have to go to a church, shopping mall. We have to go on the streets and tell, tell people, people to register. register to vote, register to vote. Yeah. But now we say every qualified Malaysian yes. with a my card. Yes. You're not a convicted criminal. Yes. Okay. You would have a my card. Yeah. You would be automatically. Be registered, registered already. So if you are 30, you are automatically in the electoral roll. Definitely. But what details were they put in? It would be based on your IC yes. when that amendment was made, right? Correct. So it would be based on your old address. Correct. Okay. Now what happens if you ask me, I go and check, but I cannot find myself registered anywhere. There's yeah. no details. Yeah. Now there's one category of people who would find their name missing from the electoral roll. Oh, okay. If their IC is incomplete. Oh, what do you mean? So sometimes people go and register. When uh-huh. you get your IC, yeah. you write the address. 
nobody in JPM will go and verify. Do you really live in that place, right? Mm -hmm. So some people would get their postcode wrong. Right. Okay. So when that happens, election commission look at the address and say, look, the election, the, the, the your address is incomplete. I'm unable to tell mm. from this address, is it Segambut or is it Subang? Yeah. So in those category, these people will find their names missing. So what happens then? You have to call election commission. Okay. Okay. And they will have to sort it out for you. I don't know what will happen this round, if especially yeah. if they don't have enough time, because yeah. they will say that your IC is like that. So unless you get your IC amended, yeah. So basically, whatever you do to your IC now, mm -hmm. because you have changed your address to IC, mm -hmm. it does not mean that election commission is mm -hmm. automatically notified now, because there are two different agencies. Yeah. Your IC, you do it with JPN. Correct, JPN. National Registration Department. Yes. You have changed that, but election commission, they are using the gazetted one. As of August. Oh, you, you see? Understand. That's why we tell people, don't do the last minute change now because yeah, it takes no time to yeah. be reflected into the electoral. Yeah. So, important thing, check your details. If you are still registered to vote in the old place, please make the travel. Please go because that old place also need your vote. Yes, I'm yes. doing that. Yes. Uh, flight tickets are very expensive, but I'm doing that. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. Oh my gosh, we, we went right into politics because yeah. I, I intended to start the episode a bit more lighthearted, but I think you made it so easy to understand. Yeah. So thank you very much. Well, you know what? We're going to go straight into the rest of it, really. <laughs> I, I also, with all the talks about elections and everything, I think, um, Hannah, I, I need to come clean. This is my first time voting. Yep. That's fine. Um, I feel very embarrassed saying this because I think in my previous episode, I did share it. Uh, the reason why is because I've always been very ignorant about politics. No one in my family talks about it. Uh, even if they do, they don't include me in the conversation when I was younger. So I always felt like super disconnected from the world of politics that it's not important, that it will not really affect me in any way, right? So, um, and I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one who feels that way. Uh, a lot of youths, even if they are now 18 and eligible to vote, they don't know where to start. Yep. Right? They don't know what to do. Uh, they, the, the most common question that I got really is, um, there are so many political parties. It's so confusing. We cannot keep up. And lack of a better word, you know, all these political parties kind of like playing musical chairs. And for us, who is already so, I would say, lack of knowledge when it comes to politics, it really can be so overwhelming. Yeah. So I want to speak on behalf of those people. I'm sure there are people who are well-versed in politics, but I'm one of those who weren't and right now still really is learning to be. Yeah. So where can we start? Okay. First of all, I want to uh, deal with the fact that there are a lot of Malaysians who actually, they were eligible to vote, but they never voted. Mm. Why, you ask me? Number one, some people feel that one vote would not make a difference. Mm. Why bother? Mm. Okay, For that category of people, I will tell you that every vote matters. In some seats, elections are won by a very small margin. That means between the winner and the loser, mm. it's a matter of maybe 20 votes, 100 votes. Mm. Which means if there are 100 of the people who think the same way, yeah. my vote would not have made a difference. But if they had turned up, mm. they would have won that seat over, yeah. maybe for the opposition party. Yeah. Okay. And when you go into parliament, you remember, 222 seats, you yes. need 51%. Yes. Sometimes, it is down to that small majority mm -hmm. that one or two seats will tip yes. the, the power over. Right? Opposition can become government suddenly mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. one or two seats matter. Which is what happened... In 2018. Yeah. So what happened in 2018, okay, is that the opposition, yep. Harapan, yes. Harapan won the election. Okay. But we had cross parties happening. So before this, before okay. anti-hopping, yes. okay, so for example, I represent the DAP. Yes. You represent AMNO. Yeah. Okay. Or you represent PKR. Yep. So let's start with the AMNO scenario first. Yeah. Hopping. You are government. I am opposition. Yes. Okay. So when we won yeah. 2018, some from AMNO didn't want to be on the losing team. Ah. So they hop over and join Pakatan Harapan. Is it legal? At that time, there was no law to prohibit. Right. Okay. They allow the hopping because mm. they go by freedom of association. You are free as a Malaysian to associate yourself mm. to any clubs. Mm. I want to join Rotary Club. I join Rotary Club. I want to join... CF, Christian mm. Fellowship. I joined Christian Fellowship. Yeah. The, the idea of a freedom yeah. of association, yeah. right? 
But because of this, mm. many people felt very disillusioned because they say, you cheated me on my votes, yeah. even for the AMNO supporters. Yeah. Hey, I voted for AMNO. How now can you, you jump to Harapan? Yeah. Right? So what happened in 2020, January, just before the COVID <laughs> lockdown? Yes. Pakatan Harapan yeah. had MPs hopping to the other side. They hopped back to yes, the, uh, other side. the other so side. So Bersatu was yeah. with Harapan. Yes. The party of Muyidin. Mm. Bersatu left Harapan. The entire coalition hopped out of Harapan mm -hmm. and they say we will now combine power. Remember the 51% I yes. told you? Bersatu combined back with AMNO, passed and they formed the 51%. Leaving, leaving us behind. behind. So overnight, we yeah. became opposition. Okay. So because of that, remember I told you about the slim majority that one or two seats. Yes. That continued to happen even after Perikata National, which is Muyidin. Okay. And pass. They governed during the COVID lockdown. Yes. Right? They then also lost the 51% because some in AMNO withdrew their support. Can you imagine? <gasps> that's how, that's how last year, yes. Ismail Sabri became the new face yeah. to receive 51% support. Yes. So in five years, in four years, mm -hmm. you have different prime minister who lost the 51% support. Yes. Okay. And because of that, what the opposition said, yeah. Harapan said, this cannot go on in this election. We must assure the people yeah. that politicians who are elected on a party logo cannot cross, cannot hop. That's yeah. why they call the frogs. Yeah. You cannot hop. Yeah. So we just passed a law yeah. recently yes, I heard. to say that if you contest on a party logo, mm -hmm. you must stick to that party. You cannot hop. Forever or like for that, that, that period of five years? For that, for that time, when for you contested, yeah. you get the people's support, you cannot yeah. hop. Cannot hop, which okay? is that. Yeah. yeah, if you want to hop, yeah. this is what you need to do. Mm -hmm. You will lose your seat. Mm -hmm. You then let the people decide again. Mm. So, do you let the people decide? Do you want Hannah Yo of DAP? Or do you want Hannah Yo who now represents AMNO? Mm. Because she wants to join a different party. Mm. Do you, you allow the people to decide again? Mm. So, that's why now... We tell people, look, anti-hopping law is now in place. Mm. Your vote is secure. Yeah. You have to come out to vote. So don't be disillusioned anymore. Okay? So that's that's why One. every yeah. vote counts. Because <laughs> there are many seats that they have lost based on 50% votes, 100% votes. Yeah. 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 I feel so bad for not voting the past few times. That's fine. Now it's, you know, new, new excitement. Yeah. A lot of people, it's not too late. Yeah. It is, voting is your say. Is your voice. Mm -hmm. You say, this is the kind of government I want. Yeah. Voting can be an angry vote. Voting can be a hopeful vote. Yeah. There are many reasons how people select their representative. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So when you go out, it could be a protest vote. You are voting. I don't like what Amno did. Yes. Okay? To immigration policy because yeah. they're in government. Yeah. I don't like how you close the borders, yeah. for example. Yeah. Or I don't like how you stop the you change the condition for Malaysia, my second home, making it very difficult for tourists. Yes. So some people vote like that. Mm -hmm. They say, okay, because of that, I'm not going to vote for Barisan National. Yeah. I'm going to vote for Harapan. Yeah. So they are going out to make a say mm -hmm. with their vote. Mm -hmm. When you don't vote, you think that you are staying out of voting. But yeah. actually, your act of not voting mm -hmm. will ensure the ones that you despise, they will win. Why? Mm. Because they have their core support group. Those supporters, rain or shine, will be there. They will be there to yeah. vote in their people. So that's why we appeal to everybody, please go back. You have to vote. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes we think that I'm not affected. I don't pay tax. Yeah. I am comfortable. Life is good now. Yeah. But when you go out to vote, you are voting for the next five years. Yeah. Today, you can be happy. Mm. In the fourth year, you could be unhappy. You could lose your job. Yeah. You want a government that will look after you. Yeah. Or sometimes it's too late to reverse the, the government that you have elected. Mm -hmm. Like Barisan National, they were in power for 60 years. That's that means to tell you that once they are secure and mm. they reign and there's no check and balance, yeah. it's very difficult to remove them from yeah. power. Yeah. So when you are coming out to vote today, you are also making a decision for your grandchildren 
for your children, for your daughter who will be born mm-hmm. 10 years down the road. Mm-hmm. That's why we say, look, 18 years old or 50 years old, you got to go out and make your voices heard. Make it count. Wow. Yeah, definitely. I hope you guys listening to this, if you are like having second thoughts about voting, I hope Hannah kind of instilled the reason why your vote will matter. And it's very, very important. And uh, this episode is out on the 3rd of November. So we do have quite a bit of time. So yes, please go vote and uh, buy that ticket of yours if you haven't. I bought my flight ticket. Yeah. 400 ringgit, you know, so yeah. expensive. But When is voting day? 19, 19 November this year. Speaking of which, voting day. <clears throat> what happens? Like, Okay, so now we still don't know uh, what's going to happen on nomination day. So I want to know what is nomination day? And uh, speaking of how many political parties out there, like uh, until today, I, I don't know. That's a very good question. Yeah. Okay. Now, on nomination day, that is on 5th November. Yes. Okay. So let's talk about Sagambut, the seat yep. of Sagambut. Those who want to contest, they want to be the chalon, they want to be the politician to stand a chance at this election. They will all gather at a place we call nomination center. It's usually a school. Okay. Okay. When we go there, we will have to have a pencadang and a penyokong who are registered in Segambut. So I am, for example, uh, yeah. I have not been announced yet as a yeah. candidate. But for example, I want to run in Segambut again. Yeah. Harapan then gives me a paper, yeah. a watika we call it. Watika. Okay. To say that Harapan... As a coalition, we nominate Hena Yo to be our candidate yeah. for opposition harapan in Segambut. Mm. Hena Yo, when you contest in Segambut, you will be carrying the harapan logo. Mm. You represent harapan. That's why you need the letter. It's a letter of authority given by the leadership to say you can use harapan logo to mm. contest. Mm. When I go to the nomination center at 9 o'clock, mm. there's one hour mm. for anyone who wants to register yeah. as a candidate. 9 to 10 a.m. on nomination day, 5th November, yeah. you go. When I go, I have to have a proposal and a seconder. Just like when you go for a meeting, right? Yeah. When you make a decision, must have they will ask you, where's the proposal? Any proposal? Any seconder? Mm. Same thing here. Mm. I must go with a proposal who is a registered voter in Segambo to say, oh, I propose Henayo yeah. because I live here. Yeah. And then a second voter in Segambo will be my seconder. Right. Okay. Then they will check the papers. Yeah. Okay. You are not a bankrupt. Mm. Uh, you are above 21 years old. Not a criminal. Not mm. a criminal. Yeah. Okay. Then at 10 a.m. they will say, first chalon registered. Yeah. Harapan Hena Yo. Right. I will use the Harapan logo on the ballot paper. The second candidate comes along, MCA, for example. Yeah. He represents Barisan National, the Daching. Yeah. He will do the same thing. Proposal, seconder. Okay, election commission say confirm second candidate. Oh, then we have the third coalition coming in. Mm. Muyidin's coalition, Perikatan National, yeah. Bersatu and PAS mm. and Gerakan. Okay, so imagine there are three coalitions. Yeah. They all have different parties in it. Barisan National have the race-based parties. AMNO, MIC, MCA. MCA. They are the Daching. Yes. They are the race-based parties. They form Barisa National. Yes. Harapan is the multiracial coalition, multiracial parties. Yes. PKR, DAP, Amana. Mm. Right. I'm 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 following. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And in Sabah, you have APCO. Yes. APCO also joined Harapan. So Harapan has four parties. Okay. Okay. Then you ask, what about Muda? Mm. Where does where the party they, for yeah. youth, right? So Muda has actually applied to join Harapan. Ah. But because we are too close to election. Okay, we have to formally get that done with the ROS to inform, right? Because when you add new people, so we might not be in time. So because of that, we will enter into an electoral pact. That means an agreement yeah. that we want. We are going to contest together, mm-hmm. support each other, mm-hmm. and we are not going to run against each other. Right. Uh, okay, so for example, we are, we are enter into an electoral pact with Muda. Yeah. So Muda will say, okay, since Harapan is already contesting in Segambut, Muda won't come in. Right. We won't come and split the votes. Understand. Okay, so that's what we mean by electoral pact. That mm-hmm. means you work together. As a team. Yeah, yeah, as a team. Then you have the third coalition, Perikata National. That is the Muyidin, mm-hmm. Bersatu, who yeah. left us. Yes. Okay. Correct. Then you have PAS, the yeah. Islamic party, joining yes. with them. Yes. And you also have Gerakan, joining them. Got it. Okay. So... The third candidate goes to Segambut Nomination Center 
and say, I represent Perikatan National. Okay, so at 10 a.m., the election commission say, I have, this is the order, Chalon number one, Harapan, yeah. Henayo. Chalon number two, Tom. Chalon number three, City. Yep. Okay, so in Sagambut now, on voting day, yep. on, on, on 5th November nomination day, until voting day, 19 November, is mm -hmm. two weeks. Yes. Two weeks of campaign. Yep. So in that two weeks, these three chalon will put up all their flags in Segambut. Their uh, posters. And they say, hey, Segambut residents, Segambut voters, I am here offering myself to be a candidate. Vote for me. Mm -hmm. So in that two weeks, you're allowed to campaign. Campaign. In that area. Is that a normal amount of period to campaign? Yes. Two weeks. Two weeks. For the for those of us who are campaigning, actually after ten days we're so tired already <laughs> because every morning, every morning seven a.m. you have to go out and meet the aunties who go to the market. Oh, you wow. have to meet the park goers because you have to meet the voters. Yeah. That's true in yeah. the area. And then afternoon you have to go and walk the shops. Lunchtime, then yeah. dinner you have to do chirama. On top of that, somebody like me, mm. I have to travel outside of Sagambut to help my other friends who are contesting in other seats. Mm. So there's a lot of traveling during that two weeks. Yeah. And by the end of the 13th day, you are actually quite done. You are actually <laughs> quite exhausted and quite tired. Yeah, I can yeah. imagine. So that's exactly what it means. Yeah. And so right. in okay, that okay. two weeks, you go to Chiramas, you check their social media, you find out what does this person represent? So in that two weeks, Malaysians usually will go to Chiramas, they will go and listen to ideas, they will go and listen to scandals. Mm. Okay, they will, go and, they will go and shake hands and meet face to face and they say, okay, I really want Hannah Yo to represent me in Sagambut. Why? Because this is what she fights for. Yep. She fights to protect children. She fights for equal rights for, for Malaysian mothers. Yep. So you go by what this Chalun represents, what will this Chalun do for me? Mm. Okay, then you speak to your other friends mm. because you want to make sure that you're not just winning in Sagambut, you want to win in Penang, you mm. want to win enough of the 51% yeah. seats to go into parliament and yeah. form the government you want. Wow, so those are really good uh, tips. I hope you guys are taking note about you know what you should look out for. So that two weeks is very, very important, not just for the chalon, but yep. for the voters as well to get to know who they will be voting for. That's right. Because that was going to be my next question, really like, um, how do we even begin to evaluate who's the right person to vote for? So the day after nomination day, so meaning on the day itself, we'll find out already, yes. right? On the day, you will know. Now, yeah. I, I spoke about the registered coalition, right? Yes. But in some places where they feel that these three chalons are weak, oh, you can have independent candidates. Oh. So for you, for example, yeah. say, I want to represent my hometown. I'm passionate. I don't like A, B, C. Mm. I think I want to contest. Can so there not? will be people like that. So they, 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 they don't come for any party? You are you have a proposal. Yeah. You have a seconder. Yeah. You have to pay deposit. Okay. A, a, a few thousand ringgit there. Yeah. Okay. And then you go in and they'll say, since you're independent, now you choose a logo to represent you. Some people choose tree. Some uh. people choose a fish. Some people choose an <laughs> elephant. Because they don't have a party logo. Yeah, yeah. Okay? But what this means would be a lot of voters in Malaysia, yeah. they vote based on the registered and experienced coalition. Because they feel that if I vote for you, just an independent, mm. you represent the tree. Mm. Right? Mm. A free logo. Yeah. You go into parliament, you're just one tree. Yeah. You will never be able to form yeah. with the rest. So why waste that vote? Mm. So that's why in Malaysia, mm. most people don't choose independent. Because when they go, they want to make sure their voice is heard. Is heard. Yeah. It's part of a bigger picture when you enter parliament. Understand. Yeah. Understand. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, and uh, how can we encourage people to really evaluate? Because let's be honest, you talk about all this charama, all this 18-year-old won't go. Lah. I think, I don't know. Hopefully you guys do, but majority of them, I would assume they're all online, right? So how can we encourage people to really, truly evaluate, especially for our first-time voters, really, with so many different coalition and with whatever information that they have, to critically evaluate instead of just following the lead, following a friend? What, yeah. what do you have to say to them? First thing you do is on the 5th November, mm. you check on the website, SPR website, key in your IC, find out where you're voting. Mm. Then you go and find out who is representing you who mm. is contesting in that seat. Mm. 
Mm. So if you vote in Seremban, find out on the 5th November how many candidates are there contesting in Seremban. Yeah. Okay. Then you follow their official social media account. Yeah. If you don't intend to go to Rama, you follow their official social media account. So find out Anthony Lok representing Harapan. Mm. Follow him on Facebook. Uh, follow him on Instagram or TikTok, whichever account they have. <laughs> Are you okay? on TikTok? I am on TikTok. Oh, I yeah. learn. And so when you find out this, you will be able to see, oh, they don't have speech. Ah. They only mm. shake hands. Ah. Some politicians only during campaign time come out and hug mm. babies, kiss, uh, <laughs> a senior citizen. Some people do true, gimmick. Yeah. Right? But you want to vote for somebody based on their track record. Yes. What have they done in this area? What is their record like in parliament? Mm. Have they spoken anything of value in parliament? Have mm. they championed my rights? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's how you find out. Yeah. You follow them on social media account and wait for Cheramas during that time. You will be surprised when you come up for Cherama, it's like a carnival. The, mm. it, the atmosphere is electrifying. I yeah. cannot describe to you, especially the grand finale, the yeah. night before voting day. Yeah. Uh, on the 19th November at 12 midnight, when mm. the clock strikes, yeah. nobody's allowed to campaign anymore. Right. On the 19th, people come out to vote. So you cannot campaign on social media, you cannot do anything. Yeah. Okay. So the night before, like 12 midnight, mm. is the time you stop campaigning at 8 p.m at the Chirama, the grand finale, wow. young and old, they all come out. And sometimes even in the heavy rain, yeah. people come out with the umbrella just to listen to, I support my candidate. Yeah. Right? You will have to support somebody. So yeah. you have to choose somebody. And so usually the opposition rallies are huge crowd mm -hmm. because the ruling government, yeah. Parisa National, they don't usually do Chiramas mm, because they, yeah. they do Makan Makan. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Got it. I just want to say I really admire you so, so much. Thank you so much for that general election 101. I know that's like so like ABC for you, but the fact that you took your time to really educate me and our listeners, I really appreciate you for that. Um, but yeah, I, I really admire, like we really admire you for what you do, not just how you um, and many other Malaysian female leaders paving way in politics, but just seeing how you really push and pursue this mission of your soul faithfully, really. And growing up in rather a conservative country, because in a sense, you've been going against everything people say. And the reason why I say this is also because I feel like growing up in the past 20 plus years, I feel like there's really not much place for women to speak up about politics. There's this looming fear that we're not good enough that it's not our arena, that we should just take the back seat and let the man do their job. At least that's what's been portrayed as when I was younger, right? So with that being seen as the norm for centuries, being politics being arena for men, what was your struggle getting into politics in your early years and the struggles that you still do face up till today? My journey into politics in 2008 mm. At a time when I entered, I was a young person at the age of 29. Mm. Today, I'm 43. Mm. When I entered, I really just wanted to put up a strong challenge because Barisa National has been ruling this country for 60 years. Mm -hmm. And in Selangor at the time, we didn't have strong opposition. Yeah. So out of 56 state seats at that time, only two seats belong to the opposition. Yeah. So when you don't have strong opposition... Yeah. The government does anything they want to do. Sukati. They spend whatever they want, whatever wastages, corruption. Yeah. Nobody cares because why? They are too powerful. Yeah. So when I joined in 2008, my mission then was I want a stronger opposition in Selangor. Mm. I want to fight race-based politics. Mm. I want to fight corruption. Mm. So those were my simple mission. Yeah. And so I won mm. in 2008. And then in 2013, we won again in Selangor. And at that time, they made me the Speaker of the House, the Speaker of the State Assembly. And you were the youngest woman yes, to do so, Yes, the first right? woman and yeah. the youngest. Yeah. So I presided over the State Assembly during the lawmaking process. Mm -hmm. I decide, okay, Chief Minister, you have 20 minutes to debate mm -hmm. or Opposition Leader, your time is up, mm -hmm. sit down. Okay, stop screaming, <laughs> stop shouting. Here, I want <laughs> peace and I want order. Yeah. So somebody presided over that state assembly. So yeah. that, that was my job as the speaker. Yeah. And um, that's, that's exactly how my journey into politics. Now, 
why why politics? Mm. I belong to that generation. Mm. Those who are in your 30s and 40s know. A lot of our friends have migrated. Yeah. They gave up hope in Malaysia because like they say, too difficult to change. Yeah. But I felt as a Christian that God has placed me in Malaysia as a citizen and I have two ultimate commandments. One is to love God with all my heart. Number two is to love my neighbor as I love myself. Who is my neighbor? My neighbor is the Muslim auntie down the road. My neighbor is the Indian uh, businessman in my neighborhood. Mm. The Sabahan, the Kadazan, you know, the Iban neighbor in Sarawak. So these are my neighbors. Now God says, love them as you love yourself. Mm. I love myself, so I wanted to have better life. I wanted to migrate. Mm. But what about my poor neighbor who cannot afford to migrate? Mm. What can I do for my, my, my poor neighbor who, yeah. who have no choice to migrate, who cannot leave? They are stuck here. Mm. And I felt at that time that I have to do my part to improve the situation for my neighbors, for myself and my children in Malaysia. Mm. So I give it a fight. Yeah. I might not be able to change Malaysia, mm -hmm. but for the seat that I represent, I can stop corruption from happening in Subang Jaya at that time. Mm. Now I can fight corruption, race-based politics in Segambut. I cannot change Malaysia on yeah. my own, yeah. but I can do that for my area that I represent, my hometown, the place that I fight for. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now imagine if so many good people enter the scene mm. thinking the same. Your 222 reps in parliament would be a very different group of people. Yeah. Who are not in there to make money for themselves, mm. cronies and contracts. So this act of migrating needs to end somewhere. Maybe not my generation, maybe the next generation, or maybe even now, yeah. the Syed Sadiq's generation. Yeah. Right? We must at least keep trying. Yeah. Even if you fail, I want history to record that, oh, in my mom's time, they tried. They did something. Mm. And I don't want history to remember us as that generation who did nothing. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So that was my journey into politics. And that keeps me going because the work is unfinished. Yeah. And being a woman, one of the women in, 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 in a room of men, especially in parliament, how, how do you be so steadfast, so fearless when there are people who probably still don't believe in what you do? So how do you deal with that? I receive an education in Sekolah Kebangsaan. Mm. I have a degree. Yeah. I receive education yeah. just like my male colleagues. Yes. So in terms of insufficiency, mm -hmm. I do not lack anything. Not at I all. go to the table, we are equals. I go into parliament, I speak up on policies. I have the same level of education that will empower me to understand what we are debating about mm -hmm. and how to vote. Mm. The only insufficiency I have is the fact that I have children, I am a mother. And as a mother, you do have that, uh, that role to provide for care for your children. Mm. So the only insufficiency I feel that I struggle with as a woman in politics that I cannot afford the time to travel like mm. my male colleagues yeah. because I need to be with my children also. So yeah. I have to find a balance. Yeah. I have to say, well, maybe I cannot afford so much time to do national politics, to travel and to campaign and to build a career for myself. Mm. So that with the limited time I have, mm -hmm. I have to make a call. I will spend time with my children. At the same time, I will serve in my constituency in Segambut. I will do equally well, both at home and at work. And maybe I cannot do other places. I cannot travel. I cannot grow at the speed I want politically. Mm. That's fine. I make that call. Mm. But this would mean the same challenge would apply mm. to any working mothers. Yeah, It's not just... Politics. Yeah. If you are a manager, if you are a lawyer, you yeah. are a doctor, your time would be equally demanding. Definitely. Like me. Definitely. So that's why I propose and I advocate for childcare, affordable childcare and flexi working arrangement for working mothers. Mm. You have to ensure that you tap into my strength as a woman, yes. my education, things that I have been 
train for to serve my nation. Mm. And there are many working mothers like me out there. Absolutely, definitely a lot more. Yeah. So this is what I champion, yes. childcare. Yeah. So that more women can go out to work. How many percent of women are at in the workforce in Malaysia today? Less than 56%. Mm. That would mean out of two mothers, mm -hmm. only one is working. Yeah. That's crazy, isn't it? Like women are seen somewhat less than because of their role at home. Uh, so I think the fact that you are championing championing for whatever that you have been championing to make a difference in, in the lives of especially women, single moms, young moms, or just women in general. I think, um, yeah, I just want to thank you for that on behalf of the people. Um, yeah, I, but at the same time, right, despite all this talk that we've been having, I feel like there are still a lot of young women who want to step into the world of politics, but still feel a little bit fearful about it. Mm. What do you have to say to them and where can they start? Like, I'm interested, but you don't really hear, you know, young girls saying, I, I want to grow up to be a president. You hear more boys saying that. So how can we change that? Yeah. There are many ways to get involved in politics, uh, but I must admit that mm. not everybody mm. will be called into frontline politics. That means you won't be the chalun, that mm. MP or the state assemblyman, but you can be an active political uh, member, mm. uh, having a say in party election, mm. the choosing the kind of leader you want to support and mm. the kind of policies you want to influence. Now, where do you start? You choose a party that best represents your values. So if you believe in fighting only for the Chinese, then you join a Chinese-based party like MCA. But if you believe in fighting for multiracial Malaysians, mm. I want to reject race-based politics, you join a multiracial party. There are multiracial parties like PKR, DAP, Muda, Amana. Mm. These are multiracial parties. Okay. Um... Then you decide, okay, I will join as a member right, of the party and this is how much time I have after work. I, I want to support a candidate in that party. I want to help out in a forum. I want to organize walkabout. Yeah. Okay. I want to ensure that the people in my area are politically informed. Mm -hmm. So this is how I serve. I organize food and drinks, hospitality. I serve by you know, walking around, giving leaflet of the talk. So there are so many ways. To serve. Yeah. Okay. So young people will do young programs. There are branches with all young people. Mm -hmm. And so they, they will only do programs to cater for the young. Mm -hmm. They do... Now they have that open mic yeah. concept, right? And then the older ones will say, okay, I want to just walk coffee shops. I want to go and give leaflets. I want to sell rocket. Mm -hmm. So there are programs for young and old. It's yeah. really up to the kind of time you have. It's yeah. like serving in church. Yeah. It's like serving in Lions Club. Yeah. Whatever time you can afford, whatever yeah. you want to do, you go ahead and, yeah. and plan it. Yeah. 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 You know, I, I'm saying this because um, of this stat that I, I read recently um, that um, the number of women leaders in parliament is only at 14.9%. Yeah, 14%. Which is way too low. And apparently if nev it has never gone beyond 20% in the past 65 years yeah. of independence, even though there are so many educated, highly skilled, capable women in our society. So if you're one of them, I hope that this, this, this episode today or this talk that I'm having with Hannah will encourage you, will um, give you that faith or that first step, that courage to take your first step. So yeah, that really is the, the whole uh, goal of this episode, not to like, like you said, not to change the world. But if you can like change one person, one seat, one seat, one person, one, one person's thought, I think you've, I've done my job and yeah. Yeah. Um, I think we've covered a lot about politics and, 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 and voting, elections as well. A lot of 101 that I hope uh, for all you first-time voters, we're able to like clear your doubts and like your, all your questions answered. But if you're not, please you know, leave us a comment as well. But right now, I kind of want to uh, ask one last question before I move on to some personal questions, if you don't mind. Um, so elections coming, 19th of November. Is there anything we need to prepare apart from, of course, um, knowing who we want to vote for? Okay, very good question. Now, what will happen on voting day? Yes. You, after checking the SPR website, they will tell you which school mm -hmm. you'll be going to vote. Oh. So you turn up at the school, okay? Yeah. So say USJ 11 school or US, no, USJ 12 school. Mm. You go and you start queuing up. Because yeah. they have all the different salo run, the streams. Yeah. So the senior citizens would be stream one, stream two. They go by age group. Yeah. So the younger would be the later stream. Oh. Okay. 
So they, you'll be guided into the classroom. And that's very interesting because the first time I voted, I look around, hey, my schoolmates, hey, people <laughs> of my ages because you, you, you go according to the stream. So I can't, because I'm going to vote with my mom. So yeah. we won't be able to vote together technically. No, unless of course your mom is a, a senior citizen or a, a person with disability that would require assistance, assistance, then a caregiver will be able to go with her. Right. Yeah. So you will be in different queues, okay? Oh. In different queue waiting. So when you turn up in the classroom, they say, okay, this is where you'll be voting. Uh -huh. You give to what we call a pacha, polling and counting agent. Mm. Okay, Pacha short form, uh, polling and counting agent. So you go up and you say, they, they, they are seated there with the election commission. Mm. They are, Pachas are monitoring. Pacha's role, polling and counting agents, are to ensure a clean and fair elections. Yeah. So I turn up with my IC, Hannah Yo. Mm -hmm. they, the EC people, they'll check. Okay, Hannah Yo. Okay, mm. voter in Segambo. They give me a ballot paper. Okay. Okay. With the challenge one, two, three. Remember? Yeah. I will go to a box because it's confidential, right? Mm -hmm. There will be pencil or pen there mm -hmm. that the election commission has prepared. You take your time to mm -hmm. choose which candidate. The candidate that you want to choose, you put X to the person's name. X. X. And they're very strict about it, right? You yes. can't go out of the box. You can't go out of the box. You cannot say... um. X is for the person I don't want. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> X is for the person you want. Okay, okay. Okay. So if you want Hannah Yo, you put X next to my Hannah. name. Yeah. Okay. Pens are given. Yes. No, no. On the table. <laughs> okay. You cannot put two names. Okay. You cannot. You cannot put X twice. Or like over your X. It no, you, you, know, you cannot put two two person. You cannot choose oh, okay, two person. Okay, okay, That's okay. called a spoil vote. Yeah. So you can look up the posters. They have many many ways to categorize it as spoil vote. Don't yeah. spoil your vote. Huh? Yeah. Please, Can you get another paper all, again? Like, queuing, no. Oh. Okay. Ah, there you go. <laughs> so, do not, do not spoil your vote. Actually, by the time you walk in, you probably already have made up your mind. Huh? For sure. Okay. You better lah. The queue so long, you better make up your so, mind. So, <laughs> after you put X, you put it inside a box. Yeah. You vote, you put it inside a box. Okay. Then you, then, once you have voted, they will put ink on your finger. So that's why you see a lot of yes, posters with yes, the ink. Yes, they show off the it ink. It is not for you to vote with ink. No, oh. no, no. The ink <laughs> is to indicate that you have voted. You know, I always thought to, to use your finger yes, to... Yes, I know. So select. many young people think that that's why we have to correct this here. Okay? okay, okay. The ink on your finger will stay on for a few days. It is to indicate that you have voted. Now, why is the ink important? It's called indelible ink. Indelible It ink. is to prevent the same voter from turning up in different schools to vote on other people's behalf. Got it. Okay. This is why you need polling and counting agents in every school. Yeah. So every candidate, for example, I'm going to run in Segambot, for example, mm -hmm. I will mobilize 400 pachas. Yeah. Polling and counting agents, they are positioned in all the schools as volunteers. They will watch and supervise from 8 to 6 o'clock. Thousands will come in. They will make sure that, hey, hey, there's ink on your finger you have voted before. Yeah. You are not allowed to be given another ballot paper. Yeah. Okay. These are what we call phantom voters. That means ghost voters. Mm. Okay. Counting agent, what is their role? When the voting stops at 6 o'clock, the election commission will start counting the vote. Mm. Rocket. Pakatan Harapan. How many, how many, how many? Mm. The counting agent is there to verify, to make sure no cheating. Got it. Okay. 100 people voted for Harapan. 100 the counting agent will verify. Hand counted? Yes. Wow. It is not digitalized. Wow. That's why you have the ballot paper. So the ink is trendy because most people, after they voted, they will take a social media post yes. and they'll say, I have done my part. Yes. Here, I have voted. Yeah. Okay. So that's what it is about. Yeah. Understood. Oh, wow. Okay. So in, in the ballot paper, right? It's, it's just the flag or also the it name? It has name. Name and flag. Yeah, but no photo. Oh. Okay, no photo, so you will not see Hannah Yo's face. Mm. It will just be <laughs> Hannah Yo Harapan logo. Got it, got it, okay? got it. So that's why when you drive around in your area, yes. you need to know. So if you're flying back to Penang to vote, yeah. okay, try to fly back earlier to find out or read up. Yes. So that you're not taken by surprise. Yeah. And by when you turn up and say, Oh, huh? Harapan is not standing here. Uh, yeah. you don't want you want to avoid that. Oh okay? wow, okay. I I mean, I need to do my research because I don't live in 
JD. Yeah. So, so you have to follow a nomination day? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Okay. There are some places they have eight candidates, eight names on the papers. Oh, so it's a very long ballot paper then. Yeah, because so many people want to contest. Yep. And you can only pick one? Yes. Okay. Taking my notes, doing my research right after this, yeah, okay. especially on nomination day. Uh, wow. Okay. Is there anything else that I didn't manage to cover when it comes to election that you would like to share? Okay. We are dealing with a very fast generation. Oh yeah. Minute of the length of a video has to be <laughs> one minute. Anything more, I'm not going to watch. <laughs> you are dealing with everything must be fast, fast, fast. Okay. But when you queue up with thousands of people, it's going to require time. So I tell all the young people, stay in the queue. Don't give up after one minute and say, oh, it's not my time. I don't want to wait. Lah, I go home. Stand in the queue because this is the time required of you. Five years, one time. That's all we ask of you. Stand in the queue until you have voted. Okay. Rain or shine, guys. Please show up. I yeah. look forward to that day. It's my first time. I'm quite excited. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think we have covered quite a bit, especially on G General Elections 101. Uh, right now, I do want to kind of get to know you before we wrap up the episode. Oh, though. another thing. Uh, you have yeah. to bring IC. Uh. Oh, oh, I have a question. Please oh bring my your God. IC. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of which, so I just changed my IC. Yeah. So the address on my doesn't IC, matter. it doesn't matter? No. Oh, okay. Because I a bit panicked just now when she said bring your IC. No. It won't as long as you are registered in that place, they yeah. can find your name. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, as long as I have an IC to, to, to show that I'm a citizen yes, of Malaysia. and your IC number is correct. Okay, yeah. so the address doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay, so those of you who've just changed your IC um, address, don't worry, just bring your new IC just and you'll be fine. Just check the SPR website where you are registered. Yes. Yeah. Um, and in the SPR website, it does show you, let me just do it right now really quickly. It does say Daerah Mengundi. Yeah. Locality with a lot of numbers that is very yeah. confusing for me. Dune, which you've also elaborated yeah. for us, and Parliament. Yeah. Right? So this round, for some of them, there's only just to vote for Parliament and for some, Dune and Parliament. Correct? That's yeah. just a quick summary. Okay, I've been paying attention. <laughs> All right. Okay, I think, Hannah, I, I want to come back to present time right now. Um, who is Hannah out of politics? Like stripping away the title, the position, the ministry that you're in. Who is Hannah Yeo and uh, what are some of your personal values? I'm very ordinary. I am um, a city girl, mm. uh, but I like the quiet life. Like I don't like loud, loud music. <laughs> I, I don't like, oh, I'm terrified of cats. Really? I need baby wipes, <laughs> uh, sanitizer today. Uh, I don't like makeup. Mm -hmm. Like I, I just, because... I feel that with a lot of site visits when mm -hmm. I go out and Malaysian weather, yeah. I will transform into something else <laughs> after I put on put on makeup. Yeah. Uh, outside of politics, I am. I'm a mother. I'm yeah. a wife. I'm mm -hmm. a daughter. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that I want to live an honorable life. Mm -hmm. I want to live for God. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I just want to do my part. I, I just want to make my life count. I want to uh, be able... I always imagine how my funeral would, would be like. Oh. I always imagine, you know, what would my daughter say mm. uh, at my funeral? How, what would my friends say? Would, would there be a loss in people's life if I'm gone? And, and so based on that, I live my life. So I work backward. Interesting. Um, and I, I want, you know... For people to remember that I counted for something. Yeah. That my time here actually made a difference to others. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And if you could run us, you know, how an ordinary day for, for an ordinary person like you, uh, it's like as a mother, as a leader, as a politician, as everything that you do today, what's a random day like for you? I get up, I have to get my hair done. Uh, <laughs> And that, you know, just straightening yes. uh, or just making sure, uh, you know, at, at this age, right? When you don't make an effort, it yeah. tells a lot <laughs> when you go out. Uh, and then worse still, if you're a public figure, it will be all over the internet and it doesn't forget, yeah. right? Um, and then I do the usual send drop off kids, pick up kids. Mm -hmm. um, and then I do all my appointments, my meetings, mm -hmm. uh, events. Mm -hmm. Then uh, I go back. I, I have... I don't have enough sleeps. Uh, mm. I don't have enough sleep now. 
Uh, so that's something I struggle with because when I don't get enough sleep, yep. my immune system is down For and sure. I don't want to fall sick. I don't want to get COVID again. Of course. Yeah. So these are some of the considerations uh, I have in, in managing my day-to-day activity. A lot, a lot of time on WhatsApp. Oh yeah, I noticed that. Yeah. You're always on your phone. A I can't imagine there's time. so much to answer Yeah, because to. if I don't, I cannot cash up yeah. because it just keeps coming in. Yeah. yeah. Which leads me to my next question. There are so many people who want a piece of you. They want your time. They want your attention. They want your opinion. They want so much of you. How do you ensure that you yourself don't get burned out? Yeah, so you have to prioritize. You have to make sure that in one hour with my time, Mm. how many people can I reach with this one hour? Mm. So you have to be very selective in choosing the programs and the activities that you do. Mm. But after saying all that, it's never always about just the crowd. Mm. There are also people that you want to spend time with. Yeah. Uh, that one person that you are mentoring, for mm. example, who can then you know run in the next 10 years, mm-hmm. uh, do greater things than, than me. So yeah. those people I want to invest my time yeah. into. So we have to make those kind of calculations every day. Yeah. You know, how am I best using my time? Yeah. And you know, we see so much of you on the news, on on at Charamas and at at, at at the political arena, like how do you find strength to keep going with the weight of the world on your shoulders? And when things just feels impossible, like you said just now, after nomination day, that two weeks, by the end of it, you're so done. How do you deal with that? I take one step at a time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you are thinking of the end, Mm. the the end of the race, Mm. you get a bit... uh, Uninspired yourself. Yeah. Because it feels so difficult. Like, I'm never going to win. Why Why do I want to keep trying? Yeah. But I don't think like that. Mm. I take it one step at a time. Mm-hmm. And every day, there is that possibility of things changing yeah. and, and going my way. And so, I live like that mm. one day at a time. When I look at my calendar, I try to plan for this day uh, and never beyond one weekend. Okay. Because uh, it's just very difficult. Yeah. I mean, if I look at my timetable... Mm. We are already putting in events for next year, yeah. even though election is not yet. Yeah. Uh, so it can be quite tiring living by a calendar. For sure. 29, when I was 29, now I'm 43, living by a calendar. That's insane. Yeah. It's like going perpetually on a yeah. camp and a conference. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it can be very tiring yeah. if you if you think of it like that. But if there's work that is not done and my time is not up, then mm-hmm. I just have to do my part. The time yeah. will come yeah. when my time will be up. Yep. Yeah. And until then, you just keep doing it. Yeah, there will come a time when I will retire and I can then go and do my own thing. So yeah. I'm at the same time also preparing myself for yeah. some life skill. Like I want to learn sewing. Mm. Uh, so I want to sew my own baju kurung or I want to learn gardening. I can maybe open up a shop to sell plants. I don't know. I'm just learning life skill because I feel that I lack life skill. Yeah. I mean, actual skill because you know, when you go to uni, yeah. you study, yeah. you get a qualification, you get a paper and yeah. then you go out as a lawyer and then you learn that. But there are life skills like I can't cook. I, I I want to be able to do things that, you know, that that can bring in money with mm. my the work of my hands. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, I always end our episode with, with like three questions. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead with that. Um, Hannah, what are you currently head over heels for? Batik. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I love the colors mm-hmm. and I like the fact that it is uh, the material is not thin mm-hmm. and you can do so many things. Like I can make chongsam, I can make baju kurung, I can make kebaya, I can make everything with batik. Yeah. yeah, love it. And what's the best or worst advice you have ever received? Either one or both. Worst advice? Why Why? Why bother politics? Uh, it's never going to change anything. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it is something I do daily mm-hmm. and I live by it. I know that things can change because mm-hmm. I experienced that in 2018. Mm-hmm. So, uh, what's the best advi- advice? Um, take it easy. <laughs> now, people tell me, take it easy. You can't do everything. That's true. Yeah. One thing at a time, like yeah. you said. And, uh, okay, I'm going to tweak our last question. Okay, guys? Okay, if you could meet Hannah Yo right now, who's... 15 years old, 15 years old version of you, right now, sitting across you, what would you say to her? Oh my gosh. (laughs) I can tell you exactly what I'll tell her. Oh my God. Don't eat the second pack of wonton (laughs) mee. I tell you why. Because, 
you know, I'm not good in science. Mm. I really didn't know about food and calories. Mm. And so when I was younger, I really loved wonton mee. I love, <laughs> love, love wonton mee or chicken rice. And so, you know, sometimes wonton mee, the portion is a bit small. Yes. Uh, even chak kway yes. And so you think, oh, I'm growing up, right? I need that energy. So I would eat the second pack. And that's how my tummy was formed in those early years. Yeah. So I know exactly what I tell a 15-year-old Hannah you. I love that. Thank you so, so much, no Hannah. Yeah. Um, by the way, guys, I know you guys can't see, but Hannah actually brought both her daughters with us uh, today to the studio. Like, I really don't know how you do it, but after hearing what you said and what you've shared, I guess it's really all about taking one thing at a time. Yeah. Doing what you can right now and let the rest figure itself out, right? Yeah. Thank you so much for your time, Hannah. I no think problem. it's been a lovely yeah. chat with you and I'm sure it is for those of them. Uh, those of you who are listening right now, your first time voting, like don't know where to start, I hope we give you um, some knowledge um, that you can bring home to digest. I mean, you are at home probably right now listening to this, right? But yeah, thank you so much. Is there any final words to our citizens of Malaysians who are listening right now before we say goodbye. Don't be so quick to give up on yourself, on your community, on what you're doing and on your nation. Yeah. Some things require more time when you are doing the labour and some things are worth that time. Thank you, Hannah Yeo. Yeah. Thank you. And with that, like I always say, don't forget to fall head over heels for yourself first and always. And please go out there and vote on the 19th of November. And bersama-sama kita undi lah. Okay? See you guys, bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>